I believe that very strongly. Kevin is doing a fantastic job. And I really believe we're going to take back the House. And uh, we're all working very hard on that. Um, we have uh, noticed some comments made in the media about my incredibly qualified nominee, Amy. Uh, the New York Times said her religion is not consistent with American values. She's Catholic. It covers a lot of people. It's a very disgraceful thing to say. Some of the comedians, I don't think they're comedians because comedians are supposed to be funny. They're not funny, like, at all. They're nasty, they're mean, and they think they're funny. And uh, someday, hopefully it's in five years, but someday, when I'm not here, they're going to be off television because their ratings, which aren't very good anyway, but their ratings are going to go down like you've never seen before. Uh, that includes a lot of others also. In fact, I'm sort of waiting for the New York Times and the Washington Post, and ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MS, DNC. I, I'm waiting for them to endorse me, because if they don't, they're going to drop with a thud like, you know, it was supposed to have happened long ago, and then we won a race, and uh, it was a great, uh, it was a great victory, and our I think we've never had a more energized base. I don't think so. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. The rallies that we're having are incredible. We call them protests. They're friendly protests. We don't want to call them rallies, but uh, the uh, friendly protest rallies are, have been incredible. People, I don't think anybody's ever seen anything like it. And this is still long before an election. This isn't like the evening before. These are long before an election. The, the incredible crowd we had in Pennsylvania and Virginia. Uh, in every state, no matter where, North Carolina, Florida, no matter where we go, we're having crowds like nobody — I don't think anybody's ever gotten before, ever, not even close. There's a level of enthusiasm in Iowa today with the tractors, thousands of tractors and different states, the boats, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of boats, boaters for Trump, tractors for Trump, farmers for Trump. Uh, it's really been uh, very nice to see the level of enthusiasm. I thought, though, on the religious situation with Amy, I thought we settled this uh, 60 years ago with the election of John F. Kennedy. But seriously, they're going after her Catholicism. I will stand with her, fight with her, and we will uh, make sure that these attacks stop because they're really it's unprecedented. They're basically fighting a major religion in our country. This is incredible. Fighting any religion, fighting Catholicism is just uh, incredible that they can be doing it. Are you Catholic, Rudy? Twenty-nine Supreme Court vacancies have occurred during an election year or before an inauguration. Uh, in every single instance, going back to George Washington, the President has performed his constitutional duty and nominated a justice. And in almost every one of these cases over the past 230 years, where the President and the Senate were the same party, the justice, uh, as you know, that justice was confirmed. Uh, this is about two centuries, more than two centuries of precedent. And I think it'll continue. I think we're going to have uh, I think it's going to go quickly, actually, and I think — and again, I, I don't know if I've ever seen the Republican Party more unified. I think it was probably even more unified with the impeachment hoax, actually. When they did the impeachment hoax, I think that was — which really turned out to be a hoax, because now you look at what's happening with uh, the FBI and Justice Department. If you look at all of those text messages, uh, emails that were sent, uh, it, it — we have been totally proven right. They spied in our campaign. And uh, everybody knew it. Biden knew it. Obama knew it. Everybody knew it. And uh, the lamestream media just, uh, you know, doesn't want to pick it up, although some have. I will say Catherine Herridge at CBS has done a fantastic job on it. We appreciate that. But this is a major scandal. This is a scandal the likes of which nobody's ever seen. This is actually the biggest political scandal in the history of our country. And uh, with the exception of a few. I mean, they just don't want to write about it. You should write about that, Kelly, you know? You should write about it. You should write about it. You should do something on CNN about it, because it's the biggest single scandal of our time, certainly the biggest political scandal, perhaps, in history. They uh, — they spied on our campaign. 
And then they uh, tried for a coup. That didn't work out too well. And uh, it turned out that you read the you read the text that came out over the last three days. It turned out that they were really it was reversed. It was the uh, DNC and the Democrats that were using Russia. And uh, related or unrelated, Hunter Biden got three and a half million dollars from the wife of the mayor of Moscow. Why did he get three and a half million dollars? And then he got millions more than we thought from Ukraine, and he got millions more than we heard about from China. Hunter Biden, where's Hunter? So these are all questions that are very, very big on the Internet. The biggest thing going on the Internet is exactly this. And uh, we're going to have to see how that all turns out. But it turned out that we were right, so we went through two and a half years of ruining people's lives, like General Flynn and many others, ruining their lives. And it turned out to be just the opposite. It was the Democrats that were dealing with Russia and other things. So uh, hopefully our Attorney General and others working on this very, very hard, very diligently will uh, — it'll lead to something that will be very important for our nation. I think it's very important for our nation. It's one of the most important things. A central issue of the 2018 midterm elections was the Kavanaugh confirmation, and uh, American voters punished the Democrats in the Senate. You saw what happened. We picked up two seats. Again, something that hasn't been reported on very much, but we picked up two seats for their treatment of Justice Kavanaugh and expanded our Senate majority to confirm Supreme Court justices, which was great. And uh, now Democrats are really brazenly attacking Judge Barrett for, again, her faith, mostly is what I'm hearing, for her Catholic faith. And uh, whether it's Dianne Feinstein or anybody else, I think they ought to treat uh, religion with much more respect. I think it's a disgrace that they can do it. Uh, Biden and the Democrats are desperate to distract from the real issues, which is that their party has been taken over by socialists, extremists, and probably communists. I think it's beyond socialism. I think it's a step beyond and could be many steps beyond if you take a look. And uh, that if they win, they will nominate justices who will destroy the American way of life, uh, the American dream. They will destroy the American dream. They'll destroy America. They'll destroy the United States of America. Your private right to own a firearm will be totally eliminated. Your guns will be confiscated. Your ability to live by your religious faith will be devastated. They'll abolish America's borders and give government health care to illegal aliens, which will destroy our health care system because so many people will pour into our country. That's a tremendous incentive. On voter fraud, uh, as you know, uh, hopefully there won't be a, uh, a very big movement because hopefully we're going to be able to win. I, I think we have the, the massive movement. I think we're going to have a tremendous, uh, tremendous victory. There won't be a transition because I can't imagine we call a transition if we win. You know, they talk about, will there be a friendly transition? Of course there will, but we have a big problem, and you see it every day. You see it happening every day with ballots. Uh, we are gravely concerned about the Democrat assault on election integrity. In Brooklyn, 25 percent of mail-in ballots were ruled invalid in June's Democrat primary. You saw that. And a special election in New Jersey, 20 percent of the ballots were thrown out. And four people are now being prosecuted for fraud. It's all in the mail-in ballots. 35,000 mail-in ballots were rejected in Florida's primary, and 100,000 were rejected in California. And that's just the beginning. A week after Pennsylvania's primary, half of the counties were still counting ballots. And you'll be counting them here, because this is a much bigger version of all of that. Just last week, a number of discarded military ballots were discovered in Pennsylvania. All of the recovered ballots, these were ballots that were thrown out, had been cast for a person named Donald J. Trump. In Wisconsin, three trays of mail containing absentee ballots were found in a ditch. They were thrown in a ditch. Three trays, that's a lot. In North Carolina, voters are reporting receiving two ballots in the mail. Many, many voters, I hear it's thousands, but they're getting two ballots. 
I wonder if those are Democrat areas, because the word is they are. In Iowa caucuses last winter, you know what happened there? You all reported on it, I think, very well, right? You remember that? No. It was not good, right? But in Iowa, they still don't really know who the winner was. I think they called somebody eventually, but it was many, many weeks later. But they really have no idea, and that's being continuous to be. And that's little. That's just a small. That continues to be litigated in Iowa. Uh, they can't run a simple caucus. Yet now they're trying to radically write election laws nationwide just weeks before the presidential election. I heard in New York today that Governor Cuomo wants to try and simplify the ballots because he thinks they're too complicated. And all of that, I agree with him. I think that's good. But you don't do that now. The ballots are starting to come in. And, you know, it's not, you can't do it now. It's too late. Uh, Joe Biden and the Democrat extremists oppose all of these efforts to ensure election integrity. They oppose voter ID. Think of it. Voter ID. They want a picture. They have a picture for almost everything nowadays, but they don't want a picture. You had a picture to get into the Democrat National Convention. You had a card with your picture on it. Did you know that, fellas? You have a, to get into the Democratic National Convention, you have a card and your picture is on it. But they don't want it for voting, which is a very sacred right. Uh, they want, we want proof of citizenship, a social security number requirement. They don't want any of this to happen. And they want uh, no signature verification. They don't want to have a verified signature. So they want none of the safety valves that you would have. Think of it. They oppose voter ID. They approve proof of, they, they oppose proof of citizenship. They oppose a social security number and requirements for Social Security numbers as a safety valve. And uh, they oppose even simple signature verifications. They don't want to have signature verification. They want to require all states to do mail-in balloting, right? I call it unsolicited. Some people call it universal. I think universal doesn't make sense because nobody understands why universal. It's unsolicited. They want unsolicited mail-in ballots. No, we just send these ballots to whoever you can think of. Uh, we had a case, I guess, in New Jersey, you were reading to me, where somebody was sent two ballots, and they had slightly, one was uh, had a hyphen in it, the name, and the other one had a K, and they got two names under it. So I wonder if that person was a Democrat, probably was. And uh, mailing of millions of ballots to people who never asked for them, so millions of people are going to be get, getting ballots who never ask for the ballots. They don't want the ballots, or maybe they want them, maybe they don't. Nobody knows, really. This is really a recipe for chaos. So when you look at what happened in Iowa, and again, that was run by very smart people. It was a very limited election. It was very small numbers we're talking about. We're talking about doing that for the entire nation. And you could forget about November 3rd, because you're going to be counting these things forever. And it's... Uh, very dangerous for our country. So uh, certainly transition, we, we all believe in transition. We believe not only in transition, but a very friendly. But when the ballots and when the system is rigged, which it is, obviously it is, and the only one that knows that better than me are the Democrats. And they go into closed rooms and they must laugh like hell at what's going on because these ballots are being found. And this is the beginning. I talk about it now at the rallies. All these people are watching eyes and ears, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands. But there's no justification for these extreme changes to the election law. And if you can go to the grocery store, you can have an ID with your picture on it to vote. It's so important. I mean, it's just so important. So a lot of things are going on. Very importantly, though, I think very, very, very importantly is when you, uh, when you do your reporting, I think you ought to report on the FBI scandal because it's one of the great scandals in the history of our country. And I think people want to hear about it. If you look at the Internet, you'll see how people want to hear about it. And they all know about it. And it just makes the media look so bad. And there's so much reporting. I could go into it right now, but I'm not going to do that. But it would be a tremendous thing for the mainstream media, media to really sad reporting. I think your ratings would go through the roof. I really do, because people really are tired of this fake stuff where you don't even talk about it. And 
the biggest scandal, certainly the biggest political scandal in the history of our country by far, bigger than Watergate, much bigger than Watergate, and uh, they try and avoid it as much as possible. It's getting very hard to avoid. So we'll take a couple of questions, and you may have a question for these two uh, very wonderful people, brilliant uh, people from the standpoint of politics, I would say, and law. And if you have anything for Kaylee, we'd love to do that. Go ahead, please. Phil. Thanks, sir. Um, last Wednesday, when you were speaking to the attorney generals, you said that you hoped federal judges were watching what was going on with mail-in yeah. ballots. Do you hope that Amy Tony Barrett is watching as well? I do. I'm sure she is. I think everybody is. I think everyone in the country. I think we've made it a very big issue. And it's an issue that the Democrats tried to get away with. I don't think they're getting away. I mean, so many reports now of phony ballots, you know, that I don't know if it would have been reported before. But all of these rallies, was, you know, with thousands of people last night, as you know. And we're in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the night before, we were in Virginia. I mean, those crowds are, whether it was 35,000 or 30,000, those crowds are massive. And that's on very short notice. All of those people are watching. You know, we have eyes and ears now that we wouldn't have had if we didn't bring it up. So, no, I, I'm sure she's watching, and I'm sure that everybody's looking at it. I think I think it's just common sense. Go ahead, Frank. A quick follow-up. Um, did you discuss the election with her? No, I didn't. I didn't. Just I just didn't think it would be appropriate. And I've watched over the years as uh, presidents would interview and talk and make a decision on a Supreme Court justice. And I was actually surprised they wouldn't talk about various things like Roe, they wouldn't talk about, uh, you know, things that are very important. They think it's inappropriate to talk about them. I don't know that it's inappropriate, but I've gone by that custom. Go ahead, Phil. Thanks, sir. Uh, Democrats are arguing that ACB puts in, in danger um, not only uh, Roe v. Wade, but a number of other decisions. Do you think that they are correct? No, I don't know. I mean, you know, we depend. I think she's going to rule on the law. I think she's going to. I think she's going to be a great justice for many years to come. Uh, but I can't say they also bring up health care. I mean, Obamacare is terrible. It doesn't work. We've made the best of it. We got rid of the individual mandate, which is great. We protect people with. We are going to protect people with pre-existing conditions 100 percent. But if we can end Obamacare and come up with a much better health care uh, system that's much cheaper, much cheaper, and much better, which is what we'll do. On the other hand, if the court rules against, we will manage the system better. But don't forget, we've already essentially gotten rid of Obamacare because we got rid of the individual mandate, and it was all based on that. So we've done a, a tremendous amount because the individual mandate was the most unpopular aspect of Obamacare. You had to pay a lot of money. For the privilege of for the privilege of not paying for bad health care. So that was a terrible thing for people. And what we will do is if we are fortunate enough to get rid of the little remaining in Obamacare, and again, individual mandate, the way I view it, that's no longer Obamacare, because that was the central point, and we won that. We've already won that, as you know. But by getting rid of that, it's different. It's a much different thing. The other thing we've done is managed. Here's the story. It's no good. It's too expensive. It's bad coverage. You don't get your doctor. You don't get your plan. All the things that President Obama said, you don't get. And Biden, too, by the way, if Biden even, I don't think he has any understanding of it. But you don't get your doctor. You don't get your plan. 28 times President Obama said, you get your doctor, you get your plan. It turned out to be a lie. So here's what we're doing. If we can terminate, we are going to have a much better plan and you will have your doctor, you will have your plan, you'll have a lot of things that you don't get with Obamacare. Yeah. Do you, you said this numerous times, but do you really believe that Joe Biden will be on any type of performance-enhancing drug ahead of the debates, or are you just joking? No, I'm not joking. I mean, I'm willing to take a drug test. I think he should, too, because he's had a very uneven... I watched him with uh, some of the... When he was with, you know, debating uh, Pocahontas and... Uh, Harris, who treated him so badly. But I watched him, and he was out of it, right? And then I watched him against Bernie Sanders, and he was okay. I mean, he wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible. He was okay. 
a far cry from the way he, uh, you know what I'm saying. I mean, if you look at some of those debates, I said there's no way he can continue. He can't continue. Then all of a sudden he debated crazy Bernie Sanders. And you know what? The truth is he was, he was okay. And I said, how did he go from there with those horrible performances to where he was okay? And I always joke, but you know, it is true. He was no Winston Churchill in debating, but he was fine. And people say he was on performance enhancing drugs. A lot of people have said that. A lot of people have written that. So, uh, so uh, uh, take a look at it. Take a look. Why don't you just check it? You can check out the internet. You'll see plenty of people say it. And whether he is or not doesn't matter. But uh, I would love to take a test, and he can take a test too. So we'll start with debate. Uh, obviously, it is coming up. How are you preparing? Is somebody playing Joe Biden in the debate with you? Are you doing debate prep at all? Yeah, we are. We're doing it. Uh, these two gentlemen have been helping. Uh, Kaylee's there. And we have, who plays Biden for you? I mean, who uh, I, I would say maybe a combination of these two, and either one of them is about five times smarter than Sleepy Joe. But we had a little debate prep before we came here. I think this whole thing, though, is debate prep. You know, what I do is debate prep every day. I'm taking questions from you people all the time. I mean, I've taken a lot of questions from you over the last number of years. And he does it. I watched the way he was treated on MSDNC on Friday. I guess he did it live. And it was disgraceful. It was an embarrassment. I know her, and she's a pretty tough reporter. The way she was helping him along with us, it was so obvious what was going on. She was helping him. She was giving him a question and then helping him to answer the question. I know her very well. She doesn't do that. It was embarrassing, and people don't talk about it. I mean, play some of those clips. Play some of those answers, those, the, the answers that where he wasn't able to give an answer, and she's pushing him. She's pushing him. They never do that with me, I can tell you but I don't have the kind of problems he has. How many, so, how many hours would you say you've spent on a debate? Lot of a little time. I mean, not a lot. More or less than I'm, 16. I'm running the country. I'm, I, don't, you know, I don't have the luxury. I watched other people over the years. I watched one sort of fairly recently, not too long ago, go into a cabin, lock himself into a cabin, and he came out and he wasn't very effective. You know, he had so much, so many things going on. Sometimes you can go too much in that stuff, you know. Sometimes you can go too much. I mean, look, uh, I've had, I've never debated before, but then I debated a lot four years ago. And if you look at the polls, those polls that come out, hundreds of thousands of people in Time Magazine and all of the different polls, I think there's about seven or eight of them. According to those polls, I won every debate, every single debate, in the primaries and then when I debated Crooked Hillary. I won every debate. I mean, this isn't me saying, I felt I did, but this isn't me saying, this is the polls. You had Time Magazine poll, you had this, that, and I guess they take them off the internet or they get phone calls or something. But according to that, I won every debate. Uh, and I felt I did. But I understand the subject. Now, Chris is tough. I hope that Chris is going to be equally tough on Joe Biden. But I watched... The young lady who I won't, I won't say her name, but it was embarrassing the way she was getting him along. So I just asked the question about drugs. I think it's something that would be appropriate because you can't have a president that needs that kind of help. One question is, if, you do, if you do have a president that needs that kind of help, when you've got to deal with Putin and you've got to deal with President Xi of China and you have to deal with uh, Kim Jong un, and by the way, uh, do you notice there's no war going on with North Korea, which everyone thought would be in in about one week after I uh, came to be president. They thought it was going to happen immediately. No war. Um, and that's saving perhaps millions of lives, not just, you know, they were saying, oh, 50,000 people. No, millions and millions of people could have died. Chris, we'll definitely have some questions. And one of the ones that's going to likely, everybody's going to be talking about is there's a New York Times story that came out about an hour ago that says that when you came to the White House, you were paying about $750 a year in federal income tax. They are not releasing, that they, they're not publishing the tax returns. They're not showing that out there. They're saying to protect their sources. In your tax return, sir, does that sound right that you're paying a couple hundred dollars a year in federal income taxes? It's, it's fake news. It's totally fake news. It made up fake. We went through the same stories. You could have asked me the same questions four years ago. I had to litigate this and talk about it. 
uh, totally fake news. Now, actually, I paid tax, but and you'll see that as soon as my tax returns. I, it, it's under audit. They've been under audit for a long time. The IRS does not treat me well. They treat me like the Tea Party, like they treated the Tea Party. Uh, they don't treat me well. They treat me very badly. Uh, you have people that in the IRS that very, they treat me very, very badly. Uh, but they're under audit. And when they're not, I would be proud to show it. But that's just fake news. The New York Times tried it, the same thing. They want to create a little bit of a story, a little bit of, they're doing anything they can. Not only that's the least of it. I mean, the stories that I read are so fake. They're so phony. Did they tell you this was going to come out today? No, I didn't know anything about it. Mr. I President. About it. I think somebody said they were going to do a negative. They always do. They only do negative stories. I don't think in the last, I used to get good stories in the New York Times when I ran for office and I happened to be conservative Republican. I don't think we've had a good story. They predicted my loss four years ago. They then apologized for their bad reporting. Then they predicted the FBI and all of these things. That's now proven to be a hoax, a complete hoax. They got Pulitzer Prizes along with the Washington Post. They should give all those Pulitzer Prizes back because everything was wrong. I mean, it was so bad. Their, their reporting was so bad, they were wrong. It was exactly the opposite. Now, there are people that should get Pulitzer Prizes. Solomon, Carter, uh, I mean, I, they're not in the business of Pulitzer Prizes, but Sean Hannity got it right. Lou Dobbs got it right. Laura got it right. Many people got Tucker got it right. There were many people that got it right. I don't know what they get other than a great salary and great ratings. I mean, I don't know what they get. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. On, on the, Jordan, go yes, ahead. Thank you. On, on the New York Times story, though, you have to understand that when Americans read that you may have paid only a few hundred dollars in federal income tax per year, that seems very low for someone who's a billionaire. So how well, much, I mean, well, basically they're saying I paid nothing. Can you give people yeah. an idea yeah. of how much you actually are paying? Yeah, basically, well, first of all, I paid a lot, and I paid a lot of state income taxes, too. Uh, the New York State charges a lot, and I paid a lot of money in state. Uh, it'll all be revealed. It's going to come out. But after, after the auditors, after the, it, I'm being, they, they're doing their assessment. We've been negotiating.